Welcome to the Adoption Journey Podcast. My name is Tarsha Smith and I am your host. And thank you for joining me on yet another adoption podcast. Um, Today is going to be a little different. I am so excited to have Aquia Robinson with me. But y'all, wait a minute. She's not an adoptee. She is not an adopted person. She is not an adoptive parent. However, she is interested in possibly adopting. So without further ado, hey girl. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I can't complain today. Maybe tomorrow. Well, no, we're not gonna complain at all. <laughs> Period. Um, why don't you go ahead and let the people know just who you are? Okay. Well, my name is Aquia Robinson and I'm a makeup artist. I am a podcaster. I am a friend, an auntie, a daughter, a cousin, you know, all of our own. I say good vibe. And I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. Okay. So how did we get here? Let me tell you. She and I were inboxing because I found out she is a listener of the podcast. Yes. And she revealed to me that she was interested in possibly adopting. So I was like, oh, girl, we got to talk about this. Because I know that a lot of people that tune into the podcast are interested in possibly adopting. And so I just want to kind of get into her brain a little bit and find out why. Yeah. So my first question is, some adoptive parents tell me that it's something that's always been on the inside of them. Is that true for you? It probably low key has been. Um, so I'm 36 years old for context. I'm 36 okay. years old, even though I look 26 from what I hear. Yeah, and um, and and do. <laughs> my sister literally just told me probably in May, um, because her daughter's birthday is in May. We were having a, a conversation at her birthday party, and okay. we were talking about childbirth and. Um, everything. My best friend just had a baby in March. And my sister told me that since I was eight years old, I always said that I did not want children. Like, I was like, oh, really? Because as an adult, I kind of like teeter totter. Like, I think it kind of mostly depends on if I am in a relationship and that person wants kids. But I've Mm. never really had like a strong urge to be like a mother in like the traditional sense of like, getting pregnant carrying the baby birthing the baby like all of those things like I've never had like any desire because I talked even my sister said the other day she's like yeah I always do when I was younger like I want to be a mom like I always just wanted to be a mom and I know people like that who who tell me like I just always wanted to be a mom I'm like that has never (laughs) like been a thing for me and I think I'm gonna tell you why like I think for me, just the the idea of something like growing inside of me and moving Ooh. around, just like totally, like I just cannot. You're like, I'm good it. on that. <laughs> I'm good. And I was, I've seen like three childbirths. The first time I was 14 years old, my brother wanted me to be in the delivery room when his son was born. So I always tease and say, that's probably the reason why he I really don't like to. You. <laughs> I mean, beautiful experience, of course. So yeah. my, my brother, my sister, her eight-year-old, and then my best friend just had a natural birth in March. So that was a whole different experience. And then after seeing the natural birth of being present for that, kind of like her doula in a sense, because I do yeah. I'm interested in being a doula as well. Um, she, I told her- put a pin in that. Yes, for the fit of that. Okay. But I told her, I was like, I, and I told her mother, I said, I think I'm about probably like 90% sure that I don't want my body to do that. Like, after seeing and that, I was You know what? And there's nothing wrong with that. There, it, I, I want people to not shame women for not wanting to do that because everyone doesn't want to. And I personally think that's okay. Yeah. Like, if I had to, like, if I just, you know, God saw fit that I was supposed to birth a child, then fine. But, like, right. it was up to me to, like, do I'm just like, wow. But adoption has always been like a thing for me. Like I grew up, um, a lot of my friends were like foster children for some reason. I don't know. I kind of like attracted friends that were like in the foster care system. Um, So even foster care has crossed my mind before, but I think adoption for me 
like and i'm always picking men's brain when i'm dating like would you ever adopt like mm. a lot of men are not like well, hold on let me ask you, let me ask you this the foster children uh that you like were friends of yours mm -hmm. do you know their situations like were they bad did they get adopted not were not were they bad as an individual but you know their living situation yeah their um, living situation before they came into foster care i'm not really i can't even remember you don't know Okay. No, I, I they know they get adopted. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. No, that no. is interesting. I don't. If I knew anyone that was in the foster system when I was growing up, I like it wasn't revealed to me. Yeah, it was always like that for some reason. And then um, more recently, my ex boyfriend now, his aunt used to have a lot of foster children, and the last one that she had really took like a liking to me. And at the time she was like 10, maybe 10, 11 years old. And she was only with her for a short amount of time. I think she was supposed to get adopted by his aunt, but it just ended up not working out or something like that. And she had to go back to Texas. I didn't even know she was from Texas. I did not even know that they bought people from out of state. To Girl, that's a whole nother podcast. So she was from Texas and she told me, like she was talking to me one day and she's like, um, yeah, they're about to send me back to, you know, Texas. Like, can you adopt me? And I was like, "Girl." I was like, I'm oh. not even a real adult yet. Like, I was like, adopt you. Yeah, not a real adult. Yeah, it was like a few years ago, but I wasn't like in a situation where I felt like I could adopt a child. Like, I was like, adopt hey, you. That's okay. But it, it put like a, a pin in my head because I really did like the little girl. She was so sweet. Such a sweet little girl. But I was like, adopt? Okay, maybe. Now, maybe. let me ask you this. When you think about adopting, do you think about doing it as a single woman? Or mm -hmm. would you prefer to be married? I think about it as a single woman, but just because that's where I am right now in my life. Okay. Like, I would like to be married, of course, but even a lot of, like I said, a lot of the men that I talk to, and if I just pick their brain and ask them, like, would they ever adopt? A lot of them are like, not, they're not for it. Do they say why? Because they want to have their own child. They want to be able to have their own child. A lot of them are concerned about, um, like, medical things as well, like not knowing the child's possible, like, mental health history, and you just may not know what you're getting that's what they kind of well do they do they understand that that also could be the same deal even if you have your own you don't okay. you can't exactly because the dna the dna is what it is and you don't know all of it that is so true it pops up wherever it pops up that is so true <laughs> so the next time you're having that conversation you know yes. there's another yeah. talking to fire you back you. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, it could happen even if, with your own. Mm -hmm. And what about your girlfriends? When Have you revealed this to them? Um, I told my best friend the other day, I mentioned it because I told her I was going to, you know, be on your podcast. And I feel like she knows definitely about how I feel about having children and everything. But I don't think she's ever okay. heard me mention adoption or I feel like I've talked about it before, but she was just like, oh, really? But they're they're cool with. It. I even uh, talked to my That's, mom about it the other day. What did Mama say? Right. So I asked her because she has three grandchildren with, um, by my sister already, and I asked yeah. her. I was like, "Did you ever have a desire for me to like?" have a family one day or you know get married and she was like yeah of course but if that's not what you want to do then and, then she, and I told her you know I thought about adopting and she was like I mean I, I wouldn't care like it's still your baby like I would you know a grandchild is a grandchild I would still you know love the baby the same if you chose to adopt if, if so. you chose to adopt mm -hmm. okay so here's a hard question it may not be hard but what would you say to the people that because there are some people out there that say no one should adopt anybody. Really? And because they think that the, it should it should be a last resort. They think that the child should stay within their biological family, maybe a kinship adoption, or if they have to go into the foster system to definitely go back. There are some strong opinions yeah. way on the other side of the spectrum that say nobody should be doing this. I, I I disagree with that. I've never even heard that opinion before. And I, I can't yeah, I can't wrap my mind around here recently. <laughs> yeah, I can't wrap my mind around why someone would think that way. But I'm I'm sure it's a reason. But um, I don't think that's true. I think that everybody deserves a chance at a uh, a good life or better. It, it the opinion comes from they're tapping into what is called the primal wound, mm -hmm. and 
I would encourage you to read that book, especially right. being interested in being um, an adoptive parent. And it just, the gist of it is basically that when you remove a newborn from their um, biological mother, they go through some kind of trauma. And I'm not saying that it's mm-hmm. horrible, but it, you know, everyone responds differently. Yeah. And so there's a theory that, um, you know, every adoptee has some level of adoptive trauma, mm-hmm. but there are some people that go, no, it should never, ever happen. I personally, as an adoptee, I don't agree with that either. Yeah. Um, I think there are cases where it needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And now that I know at least half of my story, I fall into that bucket of, yeah, it needed to happen. happen. Thank you. Right. Um, (laughs) And so as a person who, you know, you're interested, and I'm glad that, I was just wondering, did you have an opinion on it? And I'm not even surprised that you've never heard of it because. Yeah, because if you're not looking for that kind of information, then you're not going to. Like if you're a pro, then you probably won't come into that. You probably won't. But yeah. yeah, it's um as someone that's thinking about it, start tapping in a little bit and just yeah. but definitely, you know, if that's something that you want to do, I feel like yeah, absolutely. So if you were to adopt, let's let's paint your little picture for you. <laughs> what does that look like for you? Would you go through a private agency? Or would you go through the system? See that, and that's one thing I'm trying to figure out now through you know tuning into your podcast and learning the, the difference between the agency and you know the system, closed, open, all of those things. I've like mm-hmm. been thinking about, but I, what I'm doing now is like trying to do the research on what is required in DC yeah. in particular because my best friend knows someone who, unfortunately. I feel like they told her that in D.C. in particular, you have to foster the, uh, foster the child first before you adopt. And I didn't come across that in my research. And talking to my therapist, it didn't sound familiar. I'm trying to, to see if I can find it. I know y'all saw me. Because unfortunately, she has gone through the... Um, it's very unfortunate for her because she has gone through, I think, two different times where she's fostered children and then gone through with a, like the process of adoption and the, the children's parents have come back for them. So she had like a set of twins or something like that and raised them from when they were babies. And then they, the parents came back like two years later. I don't know. It was something crazy like that. So I would hope that that wouldn't happen. But I'm still doing my research to figure out if I'm going to do an agency or otherwise. Um, do you know that if you went through a private agency, that the cost is up there? <laughs> I saw something like 30000 or something like that. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, I'm manifesting coins. Come on. <laughs> so I feel like I'll be good. Okay. So when you're thinking about adoption, are you thinking about just the infant? stage or the whole stage of life let me tell you why i ask that question Mm -hmm. some people think about i want a baby but then they don't think about when that person grows up and then you have this teenage years and then you have this whole adult and then this adult might begin to have these questions and Mm -hmm. so maybe not before but how about now are you thinking about I think about the whole, the whole thing, because I've even thought about like the whole open, close thing and how I would feel about, or even just disclosing to the child, like you're adopted, like from the beginning, I've, I've thought about those things, like, you know, possibly going through some kind of way to, you know, reinforce that story so they, they can know from the beginning and not hide it from them. But definitely thinking about the whole child's life, because I've also thought about how I would handle, you know, the point when they do want to, you know, find their family and how I would be able to support them on that. So I'm definitely thinking about the whole, not just the baby. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely tell them young, for sure. Mm -hmm. Tell them young. And here's a fact. Not every adoptee wants to know. Mm -hmm. Wow. There are some adoptees that are totally fine. 
Okay. Like they know they're adopted, but I don't need to go find my biological family. With their biological family, tried to find them. Now that, <laughs> I don't know. But my opinion when it comes to open and closed adoptions, I was just having this conversation yesterday with someone. I think that it should be open, but not so much because the biological parents need to come and visit because I don't think that's healthy. Okay. But I think it should be open just in case that adoptive child, want, that adoptee wants to know when they get older. So then they don't have to go digging and going through a bunch of red tape. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, the medical history. And I know that it's um, required now. I didn't have a lot. I was born in 75. Mm-hmm. They gave like a sprinkle. Right. Like I went through life not knowing until I found my maternal side back in 2012. Mm-hmm. Now I have some. I have at least my maternal side. And I just recently said on social media, lo and behold, me having that has, I personally have gone through something medically mm-hmm. and having that it helped. helped. Yeah. Wow. And so um, it's the medical um, part that I. You go to the doctor, they ask those questions about your your family history. Like, do you have a history? Right. And a lot of adoptees just put a big question mark there Mm -hmm. because a lot of them don't know. So that's the piece that I um, would say about open and close. Just open, just in the sense that. So the adoptee can make the decision later on down the line. Right, right. But I don't think it's healthy, and it's a personal opinion, for the uh, the uh, birth family to be popping in and out. Because mm-hmm. it's caused some sense of confusion. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, family, if you feel differently, drop down in the comments. Let us know. But yeah. that's what I think. What do you think? How would, as an adopter, a potential adoptive parent? I don't know, because I'm trying to think if I know anybody like that who was raised by, you know, somebody, but the parents would come and visit. Hmm. It depends. Because, you know, you. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I'm trying to paint a scenario in my head of you yeah. know, how that could possibly look or how that would work or. I don't know. Because it's like, if you could come and visit like this, then can you have then to... What are we doing? That's yeah. kind of how I feel. Yeah. Like, why? And, but sometimes, sometimes, it's not even so much they want to come and visit. Sometimes they want pictures. And I think that's okay. Okay. I mean, you can send pictures. Sometimes they want a six-month picture, a year-old picture, you know, just send me some pictures along yeah. the way. Hmm. I don't know, but definitely a personal decision, a personal choice, you know, but that is the only thing I would have to say about the open and closed. How do you think as a potential adoptive parent, I love calling you that, um, (laughs) would you be okay with them wanting to later on in life find their birth family? I think me personally, I would be okay. Just because of how I am as a person, I'm a naturally curious person. So I feel like if you want to find out, go find out and whatever you need to do for yourself to make you feel better, if that's going to make you feel better, but also preparing them for, of course, if it doesn't, you know, pan out the way that yeah. they want to be able to support them on that. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't think I would mind as long as, um, I guess the situation is ideal. Like they're not like toxic people and, you know. Unfortunately, you'll never, you'll never know that. Um, I think if an adoptee wants to go and find them, first of all, they should be older. I would say in their thirties. And let me tell you why. Because your thirties when they find them, when they look, because to have a level of maturity that you probably don't have in your twenties. Okay. And to be ready, just to have an open mind. Because you don't know when you open that door, what's on the other side of that door, rejection could be waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're a little older, and I'm not going to say it it won't hurt, I am saying that you might be a little more mature to deal with it. 
Mm-hmm. Because I personally went through, I, I did find them in my 20s, in my very early 20s. And initially they said, nope. Yeah. And versus when I did actually find them in my mid 30s, I don't know. In the in my twenties, I was so immature. Like I got that no, and I felt I did feel some type of way. But mm-hmm. I was also going through a whole lot at that time, so I, yeah. I didn't sit in a long time. But I just think, what if I wasn't going through what I was going through? How would that have truly affected me yeah. in my early twenties, knowing how immature I was? Yeah. But then there's also like time is of the essence as well. Like waiting until your thirties time has passed you might have missed out on some family members that you could have met 10 Uh, years prior i hear you on that so that's a thought too again these are only um my personal opinions (laughs) (laughs) nothing in stone just um my personal opinion Mm -hmm. um i would you've never found any guy that's like yeah, I could do that. That is so interesting to nope. me. No, nope. they all like either they, you know, they want their own biological, you know, children, DNA and everything. My husband touched on that when he and I did our podcast together, uh, did an episode together. And he was saying, not even so much the guys, but just in general, us as black people want our own. Yeah. So even for you, especially as a single black woman, wanting to tap in and be like, you know what? I think I could do this. Because I feel this. like I'd be taking care of people's kids anyway. Like, I, I might as well. <laughs> I got <laughs> six godchildren, okay? The oldest one is 16, just turned 16, and the baby is six months. So, I But are like you I'm... that godmother that's like hands-on? I am. Oh, I hang okay. out with the kids. I take them out. I spend time, you know, so... Okay, so I'm gonna play devil's advocate. How not? How? Why not just stay there and live in that? I could. I I very much could because a lot of people, even when I mention adoption or children, a lot of people are like, "Girl, just be an auntie." Like kids are expensive. <laughs> like even observing my sister with her ch- her children, she has three children. They have their activities. They have their schedules. And I asked her the other day. I said, "So what do you do on a Saturday for yourself?" Because we had this soccer game all day. <laughs> like. What do you do for yourself? So it's still, you know, up in the air. You know, it's it's, these are thoughts. You know, I could very well just continue to be the rich auntie. And the rich auntie, I love it. Love love my god kids, love my my nieces and nephews because there's a lot of them as well. Like a lot. Uh. (laughs) I'll tell you this because I certainly don't want to discourage you. But as a parent, you just find just like you find time to do any and everything else. You Mm -hmm. find time. Period. That's that's what we do. And my favorite motto that I have to tell even my my son, because his kids are little right now. I'm like, they will not be babies forever. They will not be little forever. No. They mm-hmm. look that they time grow. goes by fast. They grow. And so um oh I have one more question for you and it's totally what's <laughs> my train of thought. It's okay. I can tell you this too. I see a lot of um, nothing against people that are doing this either, but I see a lot of younger people, like I'm young, but like in their twenties, um, saving their eggs and stuff because they dating out here is hard. So it's kind of like, they're a little bit scared that, you know, they might not find, you know, their potential mate or partner by the time they tell us that we're, you know, geriatric. Cause technically I'm geriatric at this point. Like I'm right. high risk. It's- you know, as far as if I did decide to have children. So a lot of people have been freezing their eggs and I'm like, I don't want to go that route, but I, I think never ever there. in my, and maybe it's just the times have changed. I don't know, but I never, ever one time ever considered freezing my eggs ever Me either, but people are doing it and they're like in, in their twenties, in their twenties, they like, already scared. Because the, the eggs, of course, the eggs are, you know, I guess a little bit fresher in the 20s. No, I, I, I get that. But, but is that rough also, out here? <laughs> oh, girl. Yes. See, I've been at the game a long time. Yes, I've been married over 19 game. years. <laughs> That's where I am right now. So for me, it's like people are like, oh, you don't want to have children or, you know, whatever. I'm like, I can't have them by myself. 
Like, who am I going to have a child with? Y'all keep talking about all this children stuff, but I can't have a child by myself. And then I'm 36, the way that I think about it. Right. I'm 36. I'm about to be 37 in February. So it's like, okay, if I did meet somebody for me, then I had to be comfortable. I had to get to know the person and then, and then get comfortable enough to wrap my mind around creating another a life with this person, you know? So it's like time is kind of like ticking. If I did want to okay. have a child biologically, I don't want to okay, be Okay, like, so oh. here, here's a question for you. And <laughs> I did think of my other question. I'll go back to that. At 36... Why do you think you're you haven't found the one? Girl, I don't know. I just be going through the motions. Like I find people that, you know, I date. I do date people, but it just doesn't work out. Like we might talk for an extended amount of time and then mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll try to figure that out myself because I was telling somebody it's never been a, a situation where somebody came and told me like you did X, Y, and Z. And, you know, you're this type of person and it's not going to, it's never been like that. It just kind of like, they just fizzle out. Is it when it doesn't work out, is it mutual? Uh, My last or- relationship was mutual. I was dating someone for like a year or so. That wasn't mutual at all because I really liked him. <laughs> and I think he was going through like some like mental health stuff. So he just kind of pulled away and just like, I can't. I can't do this right now type of thing. So mm. now I'm just here. Now, <laughs> well, you're on the podcast now. So, hey, uh, fellas, she's beautiful. She, look, she's single. <laughs> you just got to be uh, willing to adopt. That's one of the criteria. Right. Be open right. to it. Right. Open. I know what I want to ask you um, about fostering. Mm-hmm. So... Let's say you decide not to go um, ad- adopt. What would fostering look like for you? Oh my gosh, I would be kind of sad to foster because I get attached, and I would not want to send that that child back. Like well, if they had that- to go, if they were a good child, because I've heard some stories as well about problematic children as well. But um, ooh, that's that would be kind of tough for me to foster. Okay. So maybe I wouldn't want to give them back. I, okay, so maybe not. I get that. You would get attached and then they have to go back. Because that's the whole point of fostering is that they do go back. Yeah. So I get that. I get that. Okay, well, I'm not going to, um, I won't I won't dig anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want you to tell the people about your podcast. Okay, sure. Go ahead. So, like I mentioned, I'm a makeup artist. So the name of my podcast is called Friends in beauty and i interview different beauty industry professionals on just like their journey through life through business mm-hmm. their keys to longevity and success and i've been at it for three years now i'm available on like all the major platforms including youtube if you want to check it out but yeah i'm having a good time with it i'm enjoying it looking forward to growing the show and connecting with continuing to connect with people yeah, it's an awesome podcast. Even Thank as a person that's not in the beauty industry, I, am, I enjoy uh-huh. the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and having this conversation. It was a pleasure. I loved it. I think you're going to help an adopted, a potential adoptive person, family, couple, whomever. I think hearing this perspective is going to help. Awesome. Thank you. And until next time, bye, family.